Thank you so much, Andrea and um, Antonia, and thanks so much for inviting me to this. Um, uh, as, as Antonia said, my name is Lucy Downs, and I'm the founder and designer of a brand called Sphere One. Uh, I'm talking to you today. You've probably seen the light uh, disappearing from the studio of Sphere One in Dublin. So um, I am absolutely honored to be speaking to you and especially to be talking to Lee Edelcourt. I've been a fan of yours for many years. Uh, was able to go to one of your trend forecasting um, seminars in the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York when I was on the design team of Donna Karen. And um, actually, as I was preparing for this during the week, I was writing a few speaking notes and I lost them, of course, the document, went to find it and put in, typed in World Hope Forum, couldn't find it, put in Lee Edelcourt and up popped an interview that I did for the Irish Times magazine almost exactly 20 years ago. And they asked me, one of the questions was, who would you most like to dress? And I replied, I don't really relish the idea of dressing anyone because I would like for them to put their own style together. But the following people I think are beautiful, cool, and would look great in Spear One. Jodie Foster, Lee Edelcourt, the editor of View Magazine, and Katel Koenig, a wonderful musician. So I'm really honored to talk to you today. And it's with some trepidation that I present a little bit about my company. Thank you, thank you. And well, I am still game if you want to dress me. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we might have to get you to Dublin and come see the studio. And yeah, for sure. I'd love to continue yeah, I'm, that conversation. I'm going to come and see Philip soon. So, so we'll meet. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, it's just down the road from Trinity here. Um, so um, a little bit, I, I think the World Hope Forum also is such an incredible initiative. So I'm really honored to be uh, included. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about myself, a little bit about the brand, show you a couple of short videos, and then one about collaboration, and then uh, finish up on um, how we've been dealing with showing our international customers during COVID, which I think is a lot of what the, the World Hope Forum has started um, to, to tackle. Um, so myself, I grew up in Dublin um, city and in the mountains of Wicklow, just south of Dublin. Um, I went to Trinity College where Philip is studying and did a four year degree in economics. And for my thesis, I wrote it on the economics of waste recycling in 1989. So since then, I have really been passionate about zero waste and about a plastic free world. But to my dismay, I see things getting worse and worse. And it's, uh, it's amazing to hear the articulate, passionate people who've contributed before me on wool and synthetic carpets. And um, so I think there's a lot of work to be done. And this forum is one great place to, to uh, a nice antidote to the World Economic Forum and a good place to discuss. Um, can't happen fast enough. Um, so after Trinity, I actually had been going to art college at nighttime and I decided I really wanted to do the full four year degree and uh, same college, the National College of Art and Design as Antonia and Andrea went to. Um, and there I took a degree in fashion design and specialized in knitwear. And I'm fascinated by and love the fact that a knitted garment when it's fully fashioned starts with a piece of yarn, goes up and down, up and down, up and down or across and finishes with the same piece of yarn. There is no waste. Uh, it's got such beautiful texture, drape, volume, stretch, and um, it's incredible medium. Um, so my degree collection of knitwear uh, won the Irish Knitwear Designer Award. And the prize was to study with Shima Seiki, the Japanese technology specialist. And, um, that was amazing. Um, after that, I went to work for Donna Karen in New York. And uh, after four years, I decided I would like to start my own brand. So I came back to Ireland and I'll just show you a little of, um, share my screen. Okay. So the, the, the collection that I started is called Sphere One. There's a, a visual, 
uh, reference as well as a literal reference. So in visual terms, the sphere as a shape represents the simplicity and modernity of the brand. I wanted to create something conceptual rather than the ego of, of an eponymous collection. And to me, the circle is a symmetrical, satisfying shape, which encapsulates, encapsulates the essence of what I was wanting to do. Um, each season, it is executed in the garment as a circle of stitches at the back neck. Uh, I had a sensitive skin as a toddler and I couldn't bear to have labels in the garment. So this is an interesting yeah. shape that's seen outside and in, but it's sort of cryptic and um, uh, it doesn't have any kind of person attached to it. Um, in literal terms, I called the brand because I needed, unlike uh, prints to have an actual name. So I called it Sphere One uh, because in terms of, of spheres, we exist in an ecosphere. Our globe has a biosphere. We describe ourselves as living in the northern or the southern hemisphere. And so I felt that the first sphere is that closest to our bodies and it should be as soft and flexible and comforting as possible. And so I uh, made the sphere one brand of cashmere i wanted to be the softest uh best yarns i could find um so as i said we, we stitch it in different colors each season into the back neck lucy can i just interrupt for one second um on just i just want to make sure you're sharing correct right now we're just looking at a white screen with some words on it were you sharing uh, images or is there more coming i should be able to know um Maybe you want to just not, you know, undo share, yeah, and then pull up if we're, we didn't see any images if you were sharing okay. images. Yeah, sorry, I think it was just. That's done. okay, take your time. Yeah, now we can, now okay. we, can, we can speed, we can see the sphere now, yeah, so. If, okay, so this is the, I was starting yeah. with this board, um, the name is yeah. Sphere 1. Okay. Do you want to do um, full screen? Say that again? Uh, just, is that your full screen? That's, it, it looks yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'm can just see doing a couple, now. yeah. Uh, so it's it's if, in if the back just, neck. If you just if you just press the um at the bottom left, there's the presentation button. Next, that one, great. Yes. Um, oh, uh, next to next to slideshow. It should go to presentation mode. Like it, right at the bottom, next to the four little squares. There's that other one on the right between normal view and the four little squares. Is that on this PowerPoint or is it on yeah, the actual? Like if you just do the presentation mode or uh, slideshow, play slideshow. Are you seeing these images changing? Um, at the moment, they're not full screen. So okay. if you do, either you can go to the top slideshow and then do um, play presentation, I guess or at the bottom left next to the four little squares, there's another box on the right of the four little squares. Okay, well, I've shown you the, the logo. That's what I really wanted to do there. And then I'm going to uh, share with you um, our website actually. So um, okay. this is, I think, I think that's, that's how cool you are. Stop share, excuse me. So I'm into our website here, I think, and you see, I'm going to play you just a, a quick video of um, uh, last season's uh, collection. So something that I'm really passionate about is um, an integrity of design. I think a lot of people on this forum are, are the same, but, uh, you know, going to a place, and, and Andrea was talking about it in education, and really being inspired by um, the location, the landscape, the words of the, the, the pieces. So here's a small video of uh, our collection called Upriver, and the model speaks some of the words about the landscape of the Wicklow Mountains. So just make it full screen. Can you see this? Yeah. And hear it. Hi, Lucy, just make sure you share your sound. Um, when you share a video. Okay, I apologize. It's okay. When you click share screen on the lower left hand corner, it says um, optimize video and share sound. There's two small boxes to check. 
advanced sharing options, which is, um, we did this the other day. No, it's okay. Just click share screen. So click the green button. Yeah. And then in the lower left hand corner, there's two yes. small blocks. There you go. And the other one as well, optimize for video clip. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, I just go back here. Apologies. So there's sound with this. And yeah, get rid of that bot. Perfect. Wonderful. River bank. Deep pool. Cecil Oak. Canopy. Hawthorn. Bracken. Arbor. Silver Wink. Lichen. So uh, we use the, the best yarns that we can get our hands on. That was part of the the manifesto of Spear One. So, uh, excuse me, escape. Uh, and uh, we, I go to Pitti Filati in Florence every couple of years. And I have been asking all the mills if they can supply us with undyed yarns and plant dyed yarns. And gradually we're starting to see that come through. So we buy from Loro Piana, Cariaggi, Millefili, and we're, we always use uh, recycled and the most sustainable yarns that we can purchase. But the, the greatest element of our work is really honoring the yarn by knitting it in a correct way so that it wears well. And also making original designs that um, don't look to anybody else and are true to the landscape here and true to my inspiration. Um, so these are pieces from that collection. And then I'd like to move on to a collaboration that Sphere One did with Inishman. And it's, uh, it was mentioned earlier on, they're an amazing company in, on the Aran Islands. And a few years ago, they asked me if I would um, design for them a new modern Aran. Now, if I go back to my little, uh, here, do you see these images? Uh, no, Liz, you're still sharing on the website screen. Okay, so let me just... Is it the Inishman video that you want to share, Lucy? I was just gonna show you some stills of Aaron sweaters. So okay. I'll just race through. But basically for the, the Inishman um, project collaboration, they have used a pattern of cabling for many years, which they patented, in fact, and they've made wonderful round necks and V necks from that. And they were hoping I would come up with a new cabling so that they could um, also, you know, use that and it would be their own. And I looked around the world and I saw that many people have um, have used many different cables and it depends on what it's made in. That's really the key. So I went down to stay with them in Inishman and I thought about what it is that makes the original Aran sweater so special. And for me, it was that the woman of the house hand knitted this piece with care for her husband or for the men folk who went out fishing. So I wanted to make a thoroughly new piece. And instead of doing all over cabling, I did just ribbing at the top section of the body I made a high back neck rather than a hood which reduces visibility and um, I made a gusset that went all the way from the wrist to the hem so that it's made in one piece as this is the area of a sweater 
that is most easily damaged, but for the hand knitter would be easiest to replace. So it was with thinking about how it was made uh, and how it would be repaired and replaced over time. Um, in the armhole of the garment, there are pointelles to allow air. And then in addition to all of those design features, I wanted to make the, the shoulders and the forearms padded and somewhat waterproof. So together we found a, um, a lanolin wool that still has all of its oil and made a patch across the shoulders and on the forearms to protect the fishermen when they're pulling in the nets and lobster pots. So I'll show you the film that we made. It's about two minutes now. You hear the forecast and music. So that was, uh, you could see the purple cashmere inside uh, the neckline and uh, on the gusset. And um, now I would like to show you, I hope we can stay on the same screen. So I think some of the things that the World Hope Forum has discussed is how COVID has interrupted the international trade fair uh, scenario and how maybe some good things have come from this. So, um, for years, Sphere One started to show in, in Paris in 2003, and we were spending a lot of money and effort to show at the large trade fairs, which a lot of people would agree are kind of impersonal and um, don't allow the designer or brand to really uh, make it their own space. But in the last decade or so, uh, niche brands like Sphere One have been renting small galleries or shops in Paris. And this little store uh, we've rented for the last uh, five years. And for a collection that I did on Wicklow, which was based on the ordnance survey maps, uh, hand-stitched into the garments, we decorated the window. And it was really, everybody who passed by was fascinated by it. So we hung ordnance survey maps behind the main sweater and we hung them inside the little gallery. Um, that is I in the window with the uh, ferns and moss and stones that I carried over from the Wicklow Mountains. And the garment itself is hand stitched to the exact scale of the map. And it uh, belies the place that I started the brand and where I spent my summers. So these are the little hand-done stitches of the River Liffey. Um, but in 2020, I was standing in that shop uh, presenting our autumn winter collection to our buyers when um, 
COVID hit and we could no longer um, show people, uh, show our buyers in Paris or New York. Okay, so we had this, um, this challenge of continuing our business because uh, we sell to independent boutiques from Canada to Australia, and they typically come and see the Sphere One collection in Paris or New York. And we had no way of going to meet with them. So we had to come up with uh, some sort of substitute and we signed up with a small Irish virtual showroom, which had uh, its challenges, but we worked very hard to put all our new collection up there. And one of our buyers said to us, the key in, in buying from afar is to see the swatches and to see them in large sizes. So we, got together with a small Irish bookmaker uh, who are book binders, and they made us this special box. It's covered in navy linen with our logo embossed here. And inside, we made these little envelopes by hand so that each buyer would receive a set of swatches so they could really see them nice big swatches which you can handle uh, with all the information written underneath. Uh, they had the different colors, the different types of cabling that we were doing by hand knit, etc. And then in addition, if you can see this here, um, we were able to put across the, the name of the collection, some of the images, but also the swatches rather than little little ones squashed onto a page and, and pressed on with the cardboard, which is normal. We actually bought the yarn and had it knitted up so they could really feel this and see it. They could take the, the swatches out of this clip and bring them to different lights. And they could also compare with, for instance, I'm wearing a sweater with Grosgrain epaulettes. So they could choose um, and really see what they were ordering. And in fact, we, the, the customers that did order doubled their orders that year. And it made me realize that at a trade fair, you're actually really pressured. You're getting a quick glimpse, but there's lots of noise around. Uh, you're trying to talk to the designer at the same time. Whereas here, they could take this to their office, really concentrate, have the thing online at the same time. And they were more confident to actually write the colors that they wanted and get what they really wanted. Now, I can't say that it was a, a golden bullet because a couple of our Japanese stores and a Swiss customer said they weren't interested in that. They wanted to see us back in Paris ASAP and that was it. So we lost them for that season. But just as a way of what COVID has taught us in terms of traveling, in terms of all the waste of the big trade fair where they put down big synthetic carpet, day one and three days later it's ripped up and destroyed there are ways that us clever little humans can um work around this and that's one of them um so i've mentioned very briefly and i'm conscious of the time at the end of this presentation that uh um i'm really passionate about zero waste uh, so we buy the best yarn, as I've said, and when the wholesale orders come in, I am as tight as a tick with ordering the exact amount that we need, and we will only make exactly the orders that are required. So no stockpiling of product, no stockpiling of yarn. And then at the end of each season, we have a few hundred grams left of cashmere. So we make our classic little beanie, which is this is the women's, they're actually unisex. So we have a, a male head and a female head. And we give these to um, a charity in Dublin that uh, called ARC Cancer Support that looks after people who are suffering through cancer. And if they're suffering hair loss, men and women find this a very comforting um, thing to wear. Uh, the other thing that we, I have, a personal passion is for um, zero waste and plastic. And over the last 10 years, um, I've been looking for an, uh, an alternative to plastic. Now, when we ship our international wholesale orders, um, they have to 
come individually in plastic bags and they need to be clear because we need to see the swing tag inside in their stock room to read the information. But most of the um, compostable bags are opaque, like the ones we find in supermarkets or vegetable stores. And so this uh, company in Ireland called Ecoland have uh, developed one that's just big enough for us and can take the strain and it's 100% um, compostable. So one of our stores in Ireland said to me a couple of years ago, it's amazing. You are this tiny little niche brand. You've managed to make a compostable bag. There are none of our other suppliers that use co compostable bags, they're all plastic. It's such an easy thing. There are you know, um, advances in technology out there. And I think this is something uh, you know, your sense of open source, this is something that people have been working on, it is possible, and so there's there's hope in the hope forum. Um, I've cut that down a little bit, I was going to talk and show you another video, but I'm sorry about the technical glitches, and uh, they're all on the sphere1.ie website and Instagram, all our Paris shows, so hope to see you sometime in Dublin, and Philip, you have no excuse, you're just down the road. <laughs> So um, thank you so much.